Hello, Lords and Ladies of the Internet. It is I, the King of Candor, and today I'm going to be helping you world build with orcs in new and exciting ways. Now, orcs are amongst the most common fantasy creatures, and everyone has opinions on them. When adding orcs to your setting, consider which of the main two types of orcs you will have orcs as a race, or orcs as monsters. Don't think of these two categories as mutually exclusive. They can be more thought of as a sliding scale from pure monster to pure race. Yes, this idea is true for most things in the fantasy world, but orcs have a clear history with this idea. Now, orcs do not have an origin in ancient historical fantasy like other creatures do. If you want to learn about the origins of orcs, check out my previous video on them. Based on their long history though, starting with Papa Tolkien, orcs are pretty well set in stone, and nothing can be done with them, right? Wrong. Imagine an orc for a moment. What features do they have? I'm guessing they are muscular, able to fight a human in melee with ease. They got that green skin, either a pale green or a dark, nearly black green tinge. The tusks, right? Oh yeah, all orcs have tusks. They're a big part of their face with those pig-like noses. Now, what if I told you only the pig-like nose comes from Tolkien? Surprised? Our pop culture orcs are a mixture of several different sources, all making them into the creature we know. Pale-skinned, slimy, pig-nosed, and savage. These are Tolkien's orcs. So why can't you make your own orcs unique as well? Now, before you change your orcs into something wildly different, it helps to know which one of the two types of orcs you have, a race or a monster. Orcs as a monster is much easier to work with, and it was what their first appearance in Tolkien mostly was. If your orcs are monsters, then asking questions like, do they have women? What does orcish pottery look like? That's probably not important. If they're corrupt and vile servants of the Dark Lord who brought them here from a different realm or grew them in the pits below his tower, then orcish art doesn't matter. If you wish to use orcs as monsters, go ahead. Your story does not need to humanize them, and they can be fun cannon fodder for your heroes to fight. This is also applied to running a game such as D&D. If players want to play an orc, but you've made them as monsters, just say no. Tell them the orcs in your setting are monsters and the race is limits. But, ask them why they wish to want to play an orc. If it's a mechanical desire, with the statistics of an orc or what you have the choice, consider letting them use a stat block, but for a different race. Orcs in D&D get a strength boost and a constitution boost, with an ability to resist death once. Let them play a dwarf with these stats and change one or two things if needed. The player will be satisfied because their mechanical goals have been met. Now, someone wishing to play an orc for roleplay reasons will be more talking to. Do they want to play an orc because they're a strong race that fits well with the barbarian theme? Maybe suggest a race like a half giant or a lizard folk, or a similarly strong race that is available in your world. If they wish to play a creature thought of as evil and hated by normal society, maybe tweak a half demon or a human with an unsettling mark, or even play a dark elf. Talk to your player and find the different rates that fits more if orcs are off limits in your setting. Be creative and do not automatically give in to the demand to let them play an orc because it's in the book or because this character only works as an orc. Your setting is vital to how you run games and as long as you're very clear as to why and offer good solutions, most players will accept it. This applies to everything in your world. If all your elves are cannibals who get really close to trees on cold nights, inform your players before they try to play Legolas and are disappointed by their choices. So how does one make orcs more interesting as a monster for your setting? Well, orcs as a monster usually have a greater strength than that of a human. Warhammer Fantasy and 40k, orcs are constantly growing bigger and greener and meaner, so there's a clear progression of both leadership and threat level with an orc. He's greener and meaner, so he's the boss, works great in that setting. Your orcs should also have a reason to be the antagonist. In Warhammer, it's because orcs have an insatiable appetite for violence. In Tolkien's work, though, Orcs are corruptions of elves and men, and thus bound to the forces that have corrupted them. Orcs might also be the remnants of an evil wizard's army, created for a purpose that they now lack with the wizard dead. Due to this, they wander the land causing chaos and destruction, acting more like a natural disaster. Maybe the orcs are a full-on natural disaster, the result of magic cracking the earth open and these little monsters pouring out. I also suggest giving you orcs some more superficial, unique traits. Perhaps in your setting they have blue skin, or they have claws like Wolverine's possesses. This would make your orcs stand out if they are monsters, and you can play into these monstrous traits so they are a satisfying villain to face down in your setting. Orcs as a race is a more modern interpretation. Shadowrun was the first to have playable, non-monstrous orcs, but they were mutated humans so they basically acted just like human cultures, as all the races in that setting are. 
World of Warcraft and the Elder Scrolls are the first places I see with orcs as a unique culture, not a creature that truly emerges. In the Warcraft RTS, they had orcs as monsters, with a fun campaign to play as the baddies, which was more common back then. As more games came out, the writers found humanizing the orcs made them more compelling to play as. The Elder Scrolls also had orcs only as enemies in Arena and Daggerfall, with them switching to a playable race in Morrowind, the third game in the main series. Both of these franchises have focused on making orcs more like green humans with different cultures and tusks. This is fine for them, and the built-up lore around each series made this choice feel natural and fresh. However, other settings have orcs all feeling the same because they're copying either these games or Dungeons and Dragons without understanding the cultural changes that they went through. So let's start world building with these orcs. Let's take them and give them a different culture to start with. Orcs are always land raiders who live out in the plains and woods of these settings. Perhaps in your setting, orcs are actually industrialists who work mines and blow up the earth for more minerals. This would take some of the themes of orcs from Tolkien's original work and remix them with new questions. Perhaps they feel that destruction is necessary for their race's power. Whereas Tolkien viewed industrialization as mostly negative, maybe your orcs think differently. Perhaps your orcs are the ones who live with nature and are more druidic. Orcs are like bears who guard the forest from outside threats. This is similar to how orcs are done in the Eberron setting. Another question is, do orcs procreate with other races? Half-orcs are super common in these settings, but people don't tend to understand why. Before including half-orcs, remember that why that hybrid was created was so players could be an orc. And, since orcs are just corrupted elves, if half-elves exist and orcs are messed up elves, half-orcs follow naturally. Besides biology, skin tone and reverence for nature change where the orcs are located. Orcs in fantasy are often forest dwellers or plains raiders, and sometimes even snowy bandits. What would a culture of desert orcs look like? Could they be like the Anasazi and carve their homes out of the side of cliffs? Maybe orcs in the jungles are a lot like the Aztecs, with the sacrifice to the Mesoamerican gods and that red and blue architecture that they use. I also suggest simply not inserting orcs into one of these, but being inspired by many. So we're going to make an orc culture together that is still quite orcish, but combines Germanic tribes, Maori tribes, and the Southeast Asia. Orcs here live in dense jungles, with small villages too numerous to count. Their green and brown skin tones help them blend into the canopy. Orcs are primarily meat eaters, so hunting and raiding are their main means of survival, with farming as a secondary backup. Orc tribes also have unique scarification rituals that leave elaborate patterns on their face and skin to tell of their deeds and victories, each tribe having their own scars to represent different things. These orc tribes rarely unite, and every village stands as its own political unit. Legend has it, though, that one day a single orc chief will rise up and lead them out of the jungle, to the lands outside, and let them rule as kings and emperors. Many have done this in the past, and thus the violent reputation of orcs persists across the world. Orcs, however, spend most of their time fighting each other, and orcs are keenly aware of how costly the open warfare is. So when clans do battle, both sides engage in a war dance, where shouting and summoning of ancient spirits happen. The sides eventually do fight, but when one flees, they are not hunted down and massacred as expected. The losing side then sends the winners tributes in forms of food and slaves, growing the strength of the victor, but allowing the loser to exist still. Now, how did we get here? We took the Southeast Asian villages, the jungles and the abundance of huntable animals, added in the Maori with their combat dance, the way warfare works in that culture, and the scarification, then finished off with Germanic tribal disunity and the frequency of being united by a single strong leader to raid and move into civilized lands. We also added the preference of meat to make it a unique culture. I suggest taking some aspects of multiple cultures or changing the one here for your individual needs. Do not be afraid of changing the orcs too much. If you feel that they are far too different from what the original orc is, maybe you do take that concept and create your own race, which will be 100% unique to your own setting. That's all for today. Thank you for watching or listening this far. If you like what you heard, go ahead and like the video and click that subscribe button. As always, I appreciate your candor in the comments below, and I shall see you in the next video. While the end card goes up, I just want to say a really heartfelt thank you. By the time I'm recording this, I've hit about 200 views in the first video. That's way more than I expected in my first uh, first upload. 
look forward to trying to do this more and hopefully bringing you guys some great content. If any of you have tips or tricks or comments or any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. We've tried to read them all so far. And thank you again for listening this far.